Mathematica and giving me a chance to speak a little bit uh, about Mira, in fact. But um, as, as me and Jeffrey uh, uh, agreed, I'll uh, mostly talk about the Mathematica side because, of course, it is a Mathematica school. And perhaps I should also introduce a little bit that I'm actually working on uh, mostly from ads CFT, so it's really the other side of, of perhaps like what uh, this high energy theory, which some of you are in the group are, are oriented towards. And uh, I started doing this mirror, in fact, when, when I was visiting Perimeter for uh, half a year last year, and, and Rob actually suggested to me to look at this tensor networks because it could have interesting connections to ads CFD, which kind of nicely matches to the rest of the lectures, which I hope I'll, I'll get to, uh, to a little bit. Um, good, so, so, so the plan is a little bit to well, so uh, of course, Jeffrey uh, already nicely introduced what is this MIRA entanglement is introduced. Uh, at, at some point, I want to say a little bit why we think it's actually interesting that this could be, uh, there could be this ads MIRA uh, connection, but for, for this lecture, I'll mostly focus on the, on the Mathematica. Because as you saw these very beautiful and nice pictures uh, of the standard contractions, they, they look very pretty, and you can do some very useful computations with it, but for, uh, we wanted you in the exercise classes to do some actual computations, for instance, constructing this three tensor network and do some uh, compute the energies of that, do some computations with that. And in fact, what we will also give you is some optimized MIRA network and, and let you do some computations that, and I, I want to show you how to do that. And uh, the secondly, and, and this will also be my, mostly my second lecture, I decided to include this because I, I use Mathematica every day, in fact, and uh, I, I wanted to explain a little bit this frequently used Mathematica, which I found especially useful, some tricks in the past years to show, to show you, which I think is useful in this, this type of school. Um, good. So, why well, I don't have to say too much about it. Uh, if, uh, Mira is this, uh, is this tensor network ANSAT, so you have all these tensors. We, we saw it nicely one hour ago. Uh, MPS correlations and entanglement, they require a larger bond dimension if you want to have lo long range correlations or, or larger amount of entanglement. But if you use an ANSAT like this, if you nicely showed uh, that, that you can still have log L entanglement scaling, power law decaying correlation functions if this bond dimension is, is kept fixed, which, which, is a, which, which makes this a nice ansatz. Um, and, and, and it nicely incorporates this RD flow, which, which uh, directly relates back to Rob's lecture in this morning, which, which perhaps has come some kind of types of ADS picture. Um, in, in, in this talk and also in the, in the Mathematica files, I only focus on what is called the ter ternary mirror. So I think Giffrey showed both in his lecture, so you, you, you have to make a choice here. You, you can actually, so there are these, these red ones are unitary transformations, so there are two tensors to two tensors, so you, you can, in fact, remove some entanglement between these two legs. You can remove this entanglement. And then there is isometries, and in this case, it's called ternary, because you m map three legs into one leg, and then you make this choice that you keep this leg fixed. So what you see immediately is that you cannot actually remove with this unitary is the entanglement between this leg and this leg, so you could imagine that this is actually not such a good choice, and you should actually have done this, this called binary mirror, what Diffrey showed, where you just always do two legs disentangle, two legs to one leg, two legs disentangle, et cetera. But in fact, this one is very useful because, uh, what Diffrey also explained, if you put a local operator here and a local operator here, then these two-point correlations don't require any of these unitaries because there are these three legs over here. So this, this, this this scheme is actually easier to compute with, and it's also faster to compute with. And in the end, of course, you can still remove the, the, the entanglement between this leg and this leg somewhere higher up in, in, the, in the network. So it, it's not a bad choice either, and you can get a little bit larger bond dimensions giving the same amount of computational time. So, so but uh, uh, for just for practical purposes, I'll focus on this, this ternary uh, mirror. And indeed, and then there's also like these dot, dot, dots here, dot, dot, dots here. So in practical mirrors, what you always do is you, you take a few of these layers, and after that you assume that all the layers are the same, at least in, if you want to describe a skill invariant theory, like a conformal theory. And um, usually you're also working in translationally invariant Hamiltonians, so then you also assume that all the tensors are the same in the horizontal direction. Although in fact, is this mirror code I'll just show you, and which you can actually download this afternoon, uh, doesn't need to do that. So you can also do non-local Hamiltonians, and then, of course, all the tensors are different, and you, have, you, you end up with way more tensors, but it, it could be interesting as well. 
but in this case, they're just all the same in this direction, and, and at some point, they're all the same in the other direction, but not in the initial few layers. And there are two reasons for that. The first reason is very simple. It's a practical reason, because the, the, the dimension of these legs here, so if these are tensors, these are real spin sides, then, well, if it's an Ising model, then it's, it's, uh, the, these, uh, the, they can be up or down. So the dimension of these legs has to be two. Well, otherwise, uh, that, that's just the, physical, the physics of the problem. But typically, you want the, the bone dimension of these, these higher up tensors to be much higher, because if you choose every leg to be two, then, then you will not, not get very, uh, yeah, you'll be very constrained. You will not have a very accurate answer. So you have to have higher bone dimensions to have an accurate uh, answer for if you want to compute the ground state, for instance. And then you see that if these legs, so okay, so these are two, and these one you want to be hi make higher, so these tensors necessarily already differ from these tensors just by having a higher dimensional tensor. And, and what you also see is that if, if all these legs are two and you want to take three legs to one leg, well, then the, 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 the maximum number of dimensions you can choose for this leg is actually eight, because the, the Hilbert space of three of these uh, two tensors, is uh, the, the, the direct product is dimension eight, so this one can be at most eight, and then it can be a to the power three, and, and you'll never get there. So then, then the dimension is fixed. But there's also another reason, which is actually that, that if you do this kind of uh, lattice kind of theories, and at some point you expect to find a conformal field theory, so it will be scale invariant. But this depends a little bit on what is, what is here, kind of this lattice discretization. So it's kind of a, it's a, cut, a cut off. And you expect only to have this conformal field theory in the continuum limit, where, uh, where you have a large number of sites. So this the skill invariance is only expected to emerge at some higher level. So that, that is what is the setup. Um, and now I wanted to talk a little bit in practical terms, how are we going to do these computations, and I'll show you in Mathematica how to actually do it. Uh, so, well, we did it before in the MPS, and you had a little bit of practice, like the diagrams like this. So th this is one of these diagrams who you would want to compute if you want to compute this two-point correlator. And these are also typical diagrams which arise if you put, like, a local operator here, and you want to kind of do these block, block, block things in Mira, like what Diffie showed in the last slide. You want to compute a diagram like this. So you have all kinds of tensors here, and you want to compute what is the outcome of this tensor. And... Um, well, in, in the picture it looks easy, but of course there's a subtlety. How, how are we going to do this? And, well, okay, so here, here you still understand what's going on, right? So here, here you see it's just two tensors with four indices, which I call W here. These, are, these isometries are typically called W. So one index is up here, which is usually this index, and then three indices are down, which is, I call this I, B, B, J uh, indices. And here there's also the, uh, the same W, and, and then here I put, which, which is very common in these kind of mirror computations, it's a convention, but if you, if you turn around to W, you just take the complex conjugate, so you put a, put a star here, which is related to these kind of things arise always because you have a wave function, and then you, uh, so this is the cat, and then this is the bra, so this is the complex conjugate, so that's why you have to take a star here, and, and this is by convention interpreted like this. And what then is the, the, the meaning of this diagram? Well, so we have these, these two sums, of course. So the, these, the, these are summed over. So there are two sums, i and j, and these are the, 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 the second leg of i, of the, this, well, the, the first and the third leg of the down legs of this w uh, are summed over with the w star thing. So in fact, well, you would probably take the Hermitian conjugate and transpose this, and then, then it would indeed be like a down index of an up index, but, but we don't actually transpose it because we just write it like this. And then, then there are four open indices, so these are called an A, B, C, and D, which are here, A, B, C, and D. And you can see that if you want to compute a diagram like this, this would take, if all these legs are dimension six, uh, uh, chi, then this would take chi to the power six, because for all A, B, C, and D, we have to do two sums. So for A, B, C, D, this is chi to the fourth, and you have to do two sums, which goes chi squared, so this, this takes the time chi to the power six. This one looks way more complicated, and this one I actually want to focus off. I, I didn't even write it out as a sum. You could, of course, formally, but that, that, yeah, that, that doesn't help much anymore. Uh, but it's, it's the same kind of idea. And you have four open indices, and if you count, and there are actually 12 legs. So, well, very naively, you would say this takes a chi to the power of 16, but as Diffrey already showed you yesterday, you can do it much smarter. And we'll see in a moment that this actually takes time only chi to the power of 6. So it takes the same time as doing this contraction with a different refactor. But uh, yeah, so this, this can be done quite efficiently. This one is a little bit more complicated. If, in the exercises, you, you'll find that this takes chi to the power eight. And, and yeah, the last thing I just 
put here is that, that this is, uh, that, that these kind of contractions are much harder if you do two dimensions. So for one dimension, you can actually do it in Mira. It's kind of nice. It's kind of it's relatively simple for two dimensions. These bond dimensions go up very quickly. And even though it's a power law, it's like chi to the power 16. So if you take chi equals two, then it's already kind of tricky. You can do it with chi equals three or four. It's, it's actually hard. And okay, I put here at the top of this is this is fun fact, fun, fun, fun fact that if you want to actually, if you if you get, are given a diagram like this, and you want to find out like what is the most efficient way to contract it, this is actually an MP complete problem. So so to find like how are we going to efficiently compute this? In which order are we going to do the summation and contractions and all that, which we'll do in a moment? That that is something which is uh, which in general is very hard, but for these simple diagrams, of course, you can still do it just by hand. But if it's complicated problems, so this is actually from this paper by uh, by Frank Verstraten, who who was actually here. Good, good, good. So how? Okay. So as an example, I wanted to 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 show you how to compute this. And this also closely follows actually. So this this notation of computing a tensor di tensor network like this, which which you'll use. In the exercises, maybe not as complicated as this, but just to, to give you the idea how to contract these tensor networks, it's actually very simple. If you introduce a notation like this and this function ncon like this, so this is called ncon, a network contraction, and it was first uh, uh, put out, and well, like one year ago, people put this out in a, a MATLAB interpretation. This is by Jeffrey et al. Um, uh, and, and, and I'll give you an, uh, the same interpretation, I'll show you in a moment how to do this in Mathematica. And how to read this, it's, it's actually not so complicated. So we have all these tensors here. So first you give a list of tensors, which I call W, W star again, W, W star again. So these are the, the blue ones, the list of tensors. And then there are two unitaries. So this is this red one. And this red one is also a bit of a star again. It's not so obvious from the picture, but if you look at the physics, it should be a star too. And then this green one can be an operator. Of course, I, I give it these names because this is how they arise in Mira, but it could in principle be anything. Okay, so you give a list of tensors, and then there's this list of numbers, which is how the, the, uh, the function is supposed to contract these tensors and what it is supposed to return. So how does it do this? Well, you just look at this picture where all these legs get a number, and the, 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 well, the internal legs, they, they have a number, so this is like, this leg is number one, this leg is number two, this leg is number three, so you see that this first leg, first tensor W has four legs. This is one is the first, this is the second, the third, and the fourth. And the, 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 the numbering goes like minus one, one, two, three. So this, this exactly copies this picture. The W star is the one down here. The first leg is minus three. The second one is one. The, uh, the first, uh, uh, well, okay, so I have to mention, and I'll get back to that, I guess, too, that there is, of course, a crucial thing that this, this W is a four tensor. So it has four legs, it has four indices in, in, this, uh, in, in Mathematica. In, uh, in the tensor, you, you have four legs too, but you really have to t keep, keep track. What is the first leg? What is the second leg? What is the third leg? And what is the fourth leg? If you interchange them, it completely changes. So this is something which you have to do very consistently and which you can very easily make mistakes with, in fact. So, so what is the convention here is that these, these blue ones, the first one is the upper one, and then it's one, two, uh, one, then it's two three, four. And with, the, with the, the square ones, you just count from left to right and then from uh, to top to bottom. So it's three, four, five, six is the first, second, third, and fourth flag. And this convention is always followed, but this is uh, it's important. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, please interrupt. So, so should we read that the point W is supposed to It's a very good question, but it's, it's related that, uh, so, so actually not. So this is also seven, eight, nine, ten, se seven, eight, nine, ten in this case. And the reason is that, uh, we, in fact, what you do if you do quantum mechanics, we would have to take the U transpose, uh, Hermitian conjugate. So you would have to take U transpose, U star. But we don't write the transpose, and that's why, so you, you would have been right that it would have been the other way around. But because we don't transpose, it's still the same. So it's, it's a subtle point, but it's because of this relation. Are there, are there more questions? It's actually good. This is the this is the first W. This is the first W star. This is the second W, and this is the second W star. Right. So the nine the nine is, is supposed to be at the minus. So this is the, the second W star. So it's the second uh, element in this list, and then it's the fourth leg of the W star. So this is the first uh, first leg, second, three, four. So there's the nine of the W star, 
and it contracts the, 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 the third leg of the U star. This is the U star, so the U star is over there, so it's the one bit last, and then it says it contracts the third leg. So maybe the other way around is easier. You, you just look at all the tensors, like, like the, the W star is this tensor, and then you, you look at the numbers of these tensors, minus three, one, two, nine. If you look at the, the second W, the, the, the numbers of the second W is minus two, four, 11, 12. Minus two, four, 11, 12. Then we go, for instance, to the U, which is the, the fifth one. The numbers of the U are three, four, five, six. And then there's the three, four, five, six comparison corresponding to this U. It's, it's, and then, and, and, yeah, so, so do you now see the nine? The nine is just the, 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 se the this is the U star, so it's seven, eight, nine, ten. And the other nine is over here, minus three, one, two, nine. So, so that's also a good question. So in, in principle, you just can choose any numbering. Here I choose 1 to 12, but it doesn't even have to be, it can be any, any numbering. That, that, that is irrelevant. So if you would have uh, exchanged the 2 and the 1, then it's exactly the same diagram. So that, that's a good point. So you can also, uh, even if you do it in the code, if you replace the 1 by 20, it will still do it. So that, that is just a name. That's just a name, the lag. The minus 2, minus 1, and minus 3, minus 4 are a little bit more important because these are the open indices, so this will return a tensor with four, four indices, four legs, and the first leg will be this leg, the second index will be this leg, the third one will be this leg, and the fourth one will be this leg. So if you interchange the minus three and the minus four, you get back a, bit, a different tensor with these two legs interchanged. So that is important. The, the other numbers are just arbitrary. As, uh, yeah, any more questions about how to read, go from this diagram to the, inter, to the, to the notation here? because then we actually need to compute it, of course. And, and here I put two question marks, which I'll come back to in, in, in ten, five minutes when I'll ask you what, what should be in this question mark. In fact, in this question marks, there should be a sequence of all these legs, or there can be, it is an option actually, it, which is the order in which we are going to contract these legs. So standard, it just starts with leg one, it contracts it, it starts with leg two, it contracts it, and then we go through the, the sequence. The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But I think as Jeffrey showed yesterday, uh, some of these sequences are much smarter than other sequences. So here you can specify what is the smartest order of contracting these legs, and this is related to this thing that, that if the, the, the order actually measure, matters, and to do it efficiently is actually a little bit of a tough, it's an MP-complete problem in principle, but in this case you can still work it out. And I'll let you guess in five minutes uh, what is actually the most efficient order to do this tensor construction scheme. So, okay, so now I want to go to, this, to the Mathematica interpretation of that. Okay. Sorry? How many, how many computations do I need to perform? So, so, so good. So, so, okay, so maybe already here I can say a little bit more about the strategy and then I'll also show you in the code how to do this. So the strategy is really to, to, com to, to start, to, to contract two tensors at the same time and combine them into one tensor and then continue onwards till we're less left with the last tensor. So for instance, if we would contract this one, one and two line, we can do that. We can take this tensor W, this tensor W star, contract sum over these two legs and we get a new tensor which, is, which has an open index over here, an open index over here, an open index over here, an open index over there. So this is very similar to this contraction, except that we contracted the left two legs and we're left with open legs over here. So the contracting, so this is actually what we'll do perhaps first. The one, two contraction is just contracting this one with this one. It will give a new tensor with four open indices, two summations, so it will cost like chi to the power six. And then we need to contract, for instance, with the red one, with the green one, with the red one, with the blue one, with the blue one. So we have to do like six of these contractions. And in the end, of course, you, you get all the, always the same answer, but the order actually matters which one is, which costs more or which one costs less. So is that clear that we combine these two things into one and then we go on until we're left with the final tensor? I do, I do actually, yeah, yeah. We'll get to that too. Okay, so uh, I wanted to explain this thing about packages, but let me do that after explaining this ANCOM. This ANCOM is not. So, okay, so Pedro told me that I should, that it's best to just start writing Mathematica from scratch, and that it will be much easier to understand, but 
this ncon is a little bit too complicated. I considered I couldn't do it in time. So I'm doing it the other way around. I put this ncon, and now I'll break it up for you to show you a little bit how it works. So this ncon is really this, f this function over here, which is the essential thing, which gets these elements, tensors, uh, tensors the legs. So the legs are these, these series which, which, uh, which represent how to contract all these things. And, and then there's the sequence thing, which I told you is, is, is very important if you want to do things optimally. But it's also, and this is nice in Mathematica, it's an optional argument. So what we do over here, and we, we also def define, and uh, if you don't specify the sequence, then what does this ncon do, tensors and lags? It just takes the, the ncon of tensors and lags, and then, well, in this case, what does it do? It, it, uh, so, okay, so I, I put here, for instance, the, the, this diagram, and I, I, I put it into the, this uh, Mathematica routine, and uh, th these are then the lags, so the lags is this thing, and what, it, what does it do over here? It takes the, it, it flattens the lags, so you get all the lags, and then it selects only the positive ones, and then it takes the union. So what it does is, well, now it just has flattened all the things, and it took only, it selects only the positive lags, so we got all these lags, uh, which are there, and it doesn't need to be uh, in increasing order or something like that, but if you then do union, it selects all the, the non-identical items, and it sorts them. So, so this is the, the, the standard sequence this ncon function will take, so it will just take all the legs and it will do them in, in progressing order, and well, it didn't actually have to be uh, 1 to 12, could have been, if you skip some, it will still work, because this is the sequence it will do it. Yeah, that is also possible. So if there's a self-contraction, so if you, for instance, if you uh, contract one with one, so then now, well, so, so now it's not, no, not it's okay, so it, then there are three ones, so this will fail, right? Because there's a one and a one, and so each leg can only appear twice, and it has to appear twice, otherwise it doesn't work. But if we, if we do it like this, then it works like this, and then uh, self-contraction actually means taking a trace. And, and this is actually also rather, this can be common, you, you will never contract this one with this one, but you can actually contract this one with this one, which, uh, which is kind of, tra if you trace the wave function, for instance, you'll, you'll encounter this self-contraction. Yeah, yeah that, that's also important. So there are two cases. Some legs contract two tensors, and some legs contract with themselves, and they are, uh, they are traces. Uh, good, so I, I put in here this ncon thing, and well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly show you how it works. So we have, uh, okay, let, let, let's, con but let's just put this, this WU operator, we, we'll get a few random tensors, so we make a table. Well, uh, we'll just take some random numbers, and uh, there are three of them, so there, we'll, we'll take a table of three, and there are four tensors, so we need to have a four-dimensional list of bond dimension chi. So we take four of these dimensions, and the bond dimension, well, let's take it not too big, but take it six. So it's reasonable, if you look at this W, it looks it's still, it's not, it's, it's not so small because it's four, uh, six to the fourth elements, but you can still see it on the screen if you have a screen like this. And now we, we can do this and, well, okay, so if we don't do this, then we'll get all these numbers. It doesn't say too much. What I usually do is after computing such a thing, I, the numbers don't say too much, so I put at the end dimensions. And the dimensions, just if you have, if you have a, it's just a very convenient in these kind of uh, computations, very convenient command. If you have a tensor or a list, it just gives you that this, the, this list is four indices and all index dimension six. So this is what dimensions does. And you see it, it contracted this thing nicely. Um, and now I want to explain to you a little bit how it actually did this. So let, let's look again at this ncon thing. So what did we do? Well, the, we, we first, we, we relabeled these tensors and legs, the tens one and legs one, just to, to care, because that, that's the one we're actually going to modify. Um, yes, okay. Sorry? Yeah. So, so perhaps this is sloppy programming. I'm, I'm doing this for four years already. So you can use modules, blocks, or stuff with, and, and make all these things like tens one and la legs one, or here links, or in, in for loops, I have an inc variable. You can make it all local variables, and then it doesn't screw up the rest of your code. On the other hand, if you do it like this, then it just puts in all these values, and it's much easier to debug, because then <laughs> if you put it in a module or in a block, you can never access these variables afterwards anymore. So I think uh, Jason is probably right that I shouldn't do it like this, but this is easier, and also you don't have memory leaks because I if you do it in modules and blocks, then it makes all kinds of new variables and it leaks a lot of memory. Here it overwrites it, so 
So I find this convenient and it works, but good. That's what your point was, right? Look, look. Oh, I, I, I never have problems with it. Yeah, this. Good. <laughs> so, so what does it do? So we first have these tensors, we have these legs, and then there's this for loop, which, which increases uh, from one to this whole the, the length of this sequence. So the sequence is the, 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 the sequence of legs. So for every leg, we need to do these contractions. So, so what it, what does it do first? Well. So, so actually now we, we can more or less do this, right? So we, we can, so what does it do? It, it finds the position of, of okay, so let, let, let's try to do that. So we had this, this lag thing, right? And we had the sequence was actually just, uh, uh, was just one to 12, so it's range 12. So that was the sequence. So, and what does it do? And well, we start at the, the, the ink variable starts at one, and then it finds the position of, um, Okay, so the lags one is now is changed, but the, the previous lags is not. So what this the sequence so so now it's easy, right? Because the sequence is just one to twelve, so the sequence of ink is just one. So it just what, what does it do? It finds the, 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 the position in the lags of lag number one, which is the one we want to contract. So you see that there, it finds it at two places, which is good, right? Because every lag needs to contract at two places. If it would be one or three, then, then it wouldn't work and you would have an invalid input. And in the package, you would get an error message, but in the presentation, you don't. Um, what does it do? So it finds the, the lag number one at tensor number one, and it's this, ah, okay. <laughs> so this was not the idea, of course. It finds it at tensor number one and at, 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 place, at location number two, and it also finds it again at tensor number one and at location number, number three. So now it's a trace, but actually I didn't want to do that, right? Because we wanted to, to contract two tensors, so, but, but we changed it. So. Let's change it back again so the legs look like this. And now the position is the first tensor, second leg, second tensor, second leg. So the contraction, so what does it take? It, it takes, so all of these lists, the first element, so we, we take from both of them, so both of them, this is all, so for both the first variable and the second variable, we take the first one. So this is, so this means that the first thing we are going to contract is tensor one with tensor two. So that this is now what it knows. So the contraction one tensor and the contraction two is one comma two. We are contracting tensor one with tensor two. It also says this tensors to be contracted. And then there's a little bit of a tricky thing is this is called the links variable where, okay, that, so let me do another, uh, another little bit of a dangerous thing. So I'm going to change this, this, this uh, NCOM, which is sometimes useful if you want to understand. So this is what, what's called Mathematica surgery. You want to understand what the function is doing. I had to do it yesterday too because I wrote it a year ago. So let's see what it's doing. We, we, are, not, we are only contracting now the first, the first lag and, and we, don't, we don't care what happens after the for loop and then we are going to see what it does. So let's see. So the, the, the for loop we will do, but the rest we, we won't do. So uh, we comment this out, and then we, we evaluate this new ncon, and now it only does the first lag because I changed my thing. So, so now, now there's no return, but, but what it did is it, it did the first lag. So now, as, as I hope, we did only the first lag. So the contraction one, two should be the first and the second tensor. And this links variable I'll now show you. Uh, it gives actually that, uh, so the, the first one just gives the, the, the positions of the lag it needs to contract in these tensors. So this is basically, again, if we look, if we look at where does the position appear in this NCOM, well, so it's the, oh, uh, now, now this ink thing is, is again gone, of course, so now I should have put the ink to one and so, okay. so, so the first, so, so the position of the first leg is the second one in the first tensor, and the second one in the second tensor. So it links the second leg with the second leg. But what what this links does is, uh, which is needed for efficiency, is it, it then detects that the second leg to be detracted, the, the contracted. So the second one also contracts tensor one and tensor two. So these we have to do at the same time. 
we, we cannot just contract lag one and lag one and then leave the, leave the second one because then, well, so that would be very inefficient. So we have to do this at the same time. We have to do this lag and this lag. If you do it sequ uh, sequentially, then, then you're less efficient. So we're, we're contracting both of these lags. And then what does it do? It, it's not, well, okay, so, so let me not, for time, let me not explain how to do this for, how to detect like what is the next one and uh, how many links to, to contract it. That's what this one does. Yes, yes, so very, very good, very good. So indeed, so if, if instead of uh, naming this lag one, two, we would, would have made uh, name this lag one, three, and the three lag number two, is what you're saying, then it would not work, right? Because it would look at lag one, and it's the tensor one and tensor two, and then, then it would look at lag number two, and it would contract two different tensors. So it would stop, and it would do this contraction, and would leave these two, two, two legs open. And, and in fact, what it would do la later on is it would leave these two legs open, and then it would do this contraction. And at some point, it would have two, so you would have one big tensor, these two combined, with two open legs, which should be contracted later on. So later on, it would see, ah, yeah, we have these two legs, and it should still be contracted, so it would trace over that. So it's like constructing a very big matrix with a lot of elements, and then taking the diagonal terms. So what it means is that all the off-diagonal terms, you compute it for nothing, right? You just trace, so you just sum over the diagonal terms, so it's very inefficient. So indeed, so if you want to have the right sequence, you have to do it like this, otherwise it will be slower. We can, we can, yeah. Yeah, the, well, in, in this case, it, it, in, you could label it with la letters and then put in the sequence. Now, of course, I sort this thing because I didn't put anything here, so then you need numbers. And uh, no, you can put, do it with letters. It just takes more time to type in, right? Yeah. No, yeah, this, is, uh, this is perfectly fine. This is perfectly fine. But it, yeah. No, you would have to make like a string, like uh, with quotations and A, and then, then it would work, yeah. Yes? Good, good, so that's what we're getting now. How do we do these two legs at once and contract two of these tensors? So this is what it does over here. So, so actually, sorry, this has come back to the previous comment. What if, you, if these two legs are the same tensor? So if the, the tensor one and the tensor two is the same, so then we actually we take a trace. So this is the, doing the trace here. But I, I don't want to go into that now. I, if they are different, we have to contract two tensors. So this is, what, this is the main routine, in fact. So this is like, what do we do? We have to contract tensor one and then, of course, we know which one it is. So this is tensor one, and this is the, the tensor list number tensor two. So this is the other tensor, and these are the links. So these are these links, the links which of tensor one and tensor two have to be contracted. And then the contract thing of, is, of course, the magic where the real computation happens. So then we go up a little bit to see what does the contract do. So the contract is this statement, and we have to be a little bit careful. So here, in fact, we already, because I did this one leg thing, so it, it, it did actually, the, as a last point, it did combine these two things. So what, what did it do? Well, okay, so let me first show you the result of this rearrange A and rearrange B, and then I think you understand a little bit better what, what is the plan. So rearrange A and rearrange B. What it does is, is it, it rearranges the lags by flatten of tensor A and tensor B. And what we want to do is to rewrite the sum, which uh, the fastest routine to do this sum actually is, is a dot product of two, uh, a dot product takes a sum of, so basically a matrix multiplication. So if you have a, ma if you have a matrix, of course A, so alpha, beta, B, beta, gamma. This is the fastest way to compute these things where, where thi this beta contains all the lags to be summed over and this alpha and gamma contain all the lags which are still there. So this can be a multiple indices. So actually, Mathematica does this nicely. So if this is like uh, alpha, alpha one, alpha two, and this is gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, if you take the dot product, it just sums over the last index of A plus the, la the first index of B, and that is what the dot product does. But first, we need to write the tensor one, uh, the, the upper one and the lower one, into this form so that we can just simply do a dot product, which you see is done in the end. So we 
so it, it takes the, the tensor A, it rearranges the lag, tensor B rearranges the lag, and then it takes the dot product, immediately re returning this, 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 this tensor. Well, so, so what I wanted to do is for the A1, so the legs two, the, the, the legs two and three have to be contracted, right? So these, these have to be contracted. So flatten, what it does is, is uh, here it, it puts, like, at the first leg, it puts the first leg, at the second leg, it puts the fourth leg, and as the third leg, it puts the combination of the second and the third leg flattened. So this is what flattened does. So it norm normally, you, I f I'm sure you don't use flattened like that, but if you look in the help, you'll see that it is, in fact, a little bit more advanced than that. I don't know why. It's so you, if you can just flatten a list, but you can also do the generalized flatten, which, which does this very nicely, and, and it does it exactly like this. And, and okay, how did I construct these things? Well, it looks a little bit complicated, but in fact, it's not so much. I just took, at, at for the, the rearrange A, I took the links we have to contract as the last element, so two and a three. And then before that, I have to make this list of all the other elements. So I took a range of like, I, 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 I looked how many indices are there, the array depth, so there are four indices. I took one to four, but then I, of course, I have to select the indices which are not there, so to, in order to avoid duplicates, so it, it, I, I did a select to, to filter out these, and then I made a list of that, so it, it looks like this, and for B, it's exactly the same thing, except that now, of course, I have to do the sum sums legs as a first one, and I have to do the, the other ones later on. Is that more, uh, so, the, so this is the, the whole scheme of this tensor contraction, how to do this in Mathematica, is basically based on this, so now we can combine these two tensors, we get a new tensor, and then we repeat the whole procedure. Well, okay, so that, that I didn't explain yet. So that, that, is, that is done in this, in this kind of line where I do the, the contraction. So what it actually does is that the new tensors and the new legs become, so what I do is I drop the tensor we are going to contract. So the, the two of them, so that the contract one is dropped, the contract two is also dropped. And I, I may, I at end, at the end of the list of the tensor, the new tensor which is contracted. So we end up with a list of tensors which is, of course, one tensor shorter. And also for the legs, it's the same thing. So we drop the legs of the one, we drop the legs of the other one, and then I have to, for this new contracted tensor, I have to, to construct a new leg. So what will be the legs of the new tensor? Well, the one and the two will be gone, but there still will be the minus one, the minus three, the three, and the nine. And, and these is also upended to this list. So what, what you'll see is that instead of these, so, so we started with these legs, which look like this, and now the legs one, which is the, the legs one after one tensor contraction, it looks like this which means that we remove the first two because those with this will be contracted, then it's still the same all the way to the five, six, seven, eight, and then we appended one, which is the, the, the remaining legs of the new tensor, which we added to be contracted. So I guess this is as far as I wanted to go, explaining a little bit how this, how this, how this, how this goes, because well, you also have to take a trace, but the trace is very similar. You just take one tensor, and then you trace some of these indices, and it's, a, it's the same idea. And then in the end of this for loop, I, I also, uh, if there's still some tensors left, you take the outer product. So if there are two tensors left and you don't contract them at all, you have to take an outer product, so it also does this. And also, well, at the very end, there is a transpose, which, um, uh, which can change the order of the, of the, of the lags. Um, I, I, okay, is there anything you, I don't know, yes? I, mean, I, I, uh, I didn't know this function, so it would be good to, to compare that. Good, good, good comment. Any, any other uh, questions or comments? Yes? Uh, instead of the dot product, you mean? Uh, yeah, this is actually a mathematical reason. So in principle, if you just write out the, the, the sum by uh, doing this smartly, then it, it gives ex exactly the same answer, of course. But uh, Mathematica wouldn't recognize the sum as being just the dot product of a matrix times a matrix. Uh, the tensor contract would probably do this, in fact. So this, uh, if, you, if it really takes every element and it goes for the whole sum, then it would be much slower. It would do, instead of taking like a bunch of memory, bunch of memory, multiplying and summing, it would do it element for element and it would be much slower. Anything else? Okay, so now, of course, the magic question is, uh, how did we do this efficiently? So I think now I restored my, uh, did I restore my ncon to, to be uh, working properly? Probably not. 
Let's see. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I think I did something wrong here, but um, uh, let, let me load the package, because in the package it's actually nicer, but as Pedro asked, there's this small, cute routine that if you, uh, so we change, uh, we, we get our tensors again, random things. If, if instead of ANCOM, we use ANCOM P, it's nice, because what does it do? It, it, it says what, what it actually, how expensive was this contraction? So here you see that it did like one, one, two, three, four, five, six contractions, and each of these contractions were like chi six, chi seven, chi nine, chi ten. And I told you that this is actually not so good, right? Because, um, well, because, uh, yeah, this, this is supposed to go like chi to the power of six. And the reason, of course, is we're doing it in the wrong order. So now I want to ask one of you to come up with a nice order to make this faster. Let, let's also save this thing, actually. So this is the slow one. So let's see. So the, the, the fast one will be one with a better sequence. So who's going for it? Which, which legs? I put it also down there, I think. You can see it. Uh, which one should I do first? And then. Three, four, do we have all of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, no, nine and 10, right? Ah, too bad, high to the power nine. Doesn't work. Do this correct, if you do it really wrongly, Mathematica would crash and would run out of memory, actually, but I had that too. Anybody else? 12 at the end, and what? 11, 12 in the end, and which ones? Yeah, if you do the naively, the chi to the power 16, then 6 to the power 16, then it uh, creates a big matrix, and then it goes out of memory. Go out of memory. Yeah. No, it just Mathematica runs out of memory. No, it, the kernel crashes. Mathematica still keeps uh, So the, the, the kernel runs out of memory and crashes. Yeah, yeah it does, yeah. Okay, let, let, let me cheat, because actually I don't know which, no, I think I know actually which one to contract first. So the, well. Three, nine. Where? So what, what we could have done indeed is like the, the first, the one, two, that's fine. But then what is also easy to contract is all three of them, you can contract in one go to make one tensor. And this also should, every, all of these steps would cost chi to the power six. And then all three of them would have common legs with the one you contacted over here. So, so what you do is the, the, the one, two, and then we, we contract the, the red one with the green one, so that's five, six. And then the green one with the red one, which is seven, uh, seven eight. And then we can contract it with the one, two again, which has legs then common with this tensor, which would be three and nine. And then I think we, uh, we can do, uh, uh, 11, 12, and then we contract it with that one, 4 and 10, ta-da, yeah. Luckily. So you, you also see uh, that it makes a big difference because here it actually has, uh, writes down the total number of computations it actually did, so it's like 280,000 computations, and here it was 81 million computations, so this is a, this is a big difference. And okay, now, and of course now the question is, is it actually correct? It didn't it actually matter? Slow minus fast, and you see you have all kinds of very small numbers. 10 to the minus 9 actually looks big, but, but it's not actually big because uh, if you look at the tensor itself, random tensor, random matrix multiplications is 10 to the power 7. So it means that 16 digits or 15 are, are correct, which means it's also quite stable under numerical perturbations because if you use machine precision, you, you, ex uh, you expect to have this 15 or 16 digit accuracy. Good, so that is more or less what I wanted to, to go through in this. Okay, no, no, let, let, me, let me add one thing, like what, why this, this NCON is really great and why I really like it. Uh, so, y so you can even use it also for very simple things, like, like just an outer product. So, so for instance, if you, do, if you just use uh, NCON on, uh, on we just want to have, um, well, perhaps just a, di I, I, just a tensor, which 
it's just the identity matrix, so it's very, very nice. So you just do it like this. So this is lag minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and it, it just looks like that. So how do we put that into Ncon? It's super easy. You, you put two identity matrices, identity matrix. Uh, let's make it again, one dimension chi. No, let, let's make it two, then we can actually see what it gives out, uh, outputs. And then there are these two matrices. The one is minus one, minus three, and the minus two, minus four. And we don't have to specify the sequence because there's actually it's just an outer product. But I also wanted to show you a little bit why, okay, so, so th this is a, it's a warning if you're going to do these tensor contractions yourself that the order really matters. So if we would have perhaps logically taken the mistake that the first two legs of the first identity matrix are minus two and the other one is minus three, minus four, you see that you actually get a different result. So then, then, the, then this is the first index, this is the second index, this is the third one, this is the fourth one. And if you don't properly remember what you did, then everything after that will go wrong. And you see they're actually a little bit different, and it's sometimes a little bit hard to see, so, so you have to be careful about it. On the other hand, what we can then also do, if you make a mistake like this, you can easily fix it, so we can, we get a tensor, and, uh, well, let, let, let's take this tensor, so the previous result, and we can just say, ah, no, the, 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 well, the, the first leg was correct, but the second one was actually the, the third one, right? So the second one was actually the third one, and the, uh, uh, and the other, the third one was actually the, the, fourth, the, the second one, and then we just put it in like this, and this is, oh, uh, <laughs> what did I do wrong? Did anybody see it? No, of course, this should be a list of, of the list of lags, right? So th there's only one tensor, so that's why I should have only one element in this list. But, but luckily, it, it does the error control rather well. Okay, so now, now it works, so what it did is it just, now it, this one is just not actually a contraction, right? It just, changing the lag, this one with this lag one, and now we see we actually got the same result back as we got it before. So effectively, now if I use this list with like our lar large number of indices, I always use ncon because it's very easy to draw the picture, and you, you know exactly what it's doing. And I don't know if how many of you yesterday did this, did this problem by Gifri, where you had uh, to, uh, to, to compute this Ising model, you had to construct a translation operator, and, and in fact, I, when I did it and I wanted to do it without Ancon, I struggled a little bit with Federal Sint, it was a bit easier perhaps. But now you see how simple it is because this, this whole translation operator was just a tensor where you have all these spins. And then what, what it wanted to do is it just, you, you take this spin to the neighboring side, 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 and the last one went back to the first one. And you see immediately how you construct it with Ancon, you just take, in this case, six identity matrices and you just put the numbering correct. So this is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. This one is minus seven, minus eight, minus nine, minus 10, minus 11, minus 12. And now you, you, you'll get a big tensor of 12 indices. Um, you just put these identity matrices where this one is then minus one, minus eight, this one minus six, minus seven, et cetera. And this will give you, it will, won't actually give you a matrix in this case, it will give you a 12 tensor. Uh, and, and then you can choose a little bit to make this a matrix. So you can make it a matrix by just combining these six legs into one index and these six legs into one uh, in index. So very easy to do with uh, array reshape or with flatten also. So you, you can do to, uh, either things. Um, but you can also actually, in, in this, normally in this kind of uh, NCON tensor network uh, uh, applications, it's actually convenient just to keep all these indices. And then also your wave function is just a six tensor. So the, the wave function would then just be something which looks like this. And, and, you, and work with that. And the, the, the Hamiltonian would also be 12 tensor. So that, that's also something you, uh, well, it, it, it's kind of a choice. But you see that it's a, it's a rather powerful uh, routine and you can do all these kind of tensor contractions. Qu more questions about what you can do and what you can't do with ANCOM? Because I mean, the, the, yeah, so, so this is just an example how to, so you can, so this identity thing you can do, but you can also put a Pauli matrix here, Pauli matrix there, and then you get the Hamiltonian of the Ising model. If you put Pauli matrix here and the identity matrix there, you get the field contribution from the Ising model. And, and one, uh, if you want to construct this three tensor network, which is what we will do it this afternoon's exercise, it's actually very convenient to all write uh, all these things in NCON, and then you can just contract and, and compute all these diagrams. Network contractions. Yeah, so it's tensor network. 
And in these examples, I actually didn't contract, but of course, in, in this example, I, I, I actually did contract. Anything else? This picture. Yeah, I thought a bit about doing that in Mathematica, and I, I guess Jason could help me out. But, uh, these pictures are uh, generated in PowerPoint, so. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> generated is a big word. I mean, <laughs> this is a lot of copy paste. Yeah. Good. So, okay, let, let, let's see what else did I want to say. Okay, well, did this actually this is well, this is this example that but Jeffrey already showed. So this is something which. Uh, which is very, very, so this is something we, which I'll ask you to do in the, the second exercise. So the first exercise would be to, to play around a little bit with NCOM, uh, take, take something like a mirror like this, uh, uh, and compute like the, the spin uh, expectation values or the energy expectation value, com compare with the analytic value. And the second exercise will be to compute kind of these two point correlators in mirror, which, uh, which as Jeffrey already said, you put a, a small operator over there, you put a small operator over there. And then you see that magically, because of this, these things are unitary and these things are iso isometric, they'll all magi magically cancel, and you just are, end up with a tensor network like this. And now I think, I hope you, you get a little bit of the idea that if you use this NCOM, it's not actually so complicated to compute a value like this. It's just, it's just drawing some pictures, putting the right numbers, and, and putting the, the tensors there, and then you get this expectation value. Whereas without NCOM, I think you, uh, people would be completely lost how to do these actual summations in an efficient way. Yes? So that, that I think, uh, requires an so I did it, in fact, and it requires kind of an extra layer on, on, on NCOM to, uh, to actually write a little bit. Ah, yeah, good. So how, how, how hard is it? So now I, I wrote down this diagram with four of these, uh, three of these layers. How hard is it to make a, to compute this kind of expectation value for n layers? And this is more or less what's actually the question. So of course, you can now just do it by hand and write down all the numbers and do it. But you'll very quickly see that there is a nice uh, pattern emerging if you add an extra layer. Right? You just add an extra layer over here, you get some extra lags. And, and then the question is to automatize a little bit uh, to generate these numbers. So here I did it more or less by hand, but if you, if you make them longer and longer, it actually makes a lot of sense to, to just add four, uh, four tensors and four of these lists and, and you just add some number of numbers. So you can automatize this. Um, that's one option, so that's I think more or less what we'll, what we'll ask in the, in, the, in the exercise. The other one is to, to see that if you, you actually, in, if you add one extra layer, you actually operate with a kind of a linear operator again on this operator. So you can see this kind of adding one layer as a linear operation on, on this kind of, uh, at least on scaling, scaling observables, scaling, cor scaling observables uh, as correlator. And then you can find the, you can construct this linear operator, find the eigenvalues and eigen uh, spectrum, and then extract how this goes for a large number of layers like that. And that, that's, that's of course even nicer because then you do it once, you compute the eigenvalues and you get all the scaling dimensions. Which, which is a bit trickier, but, but it's clear that you can do this from here. Okay, let, let's, let's do the entanglement entropy uh, day after tomorrow. Uh, but, okay, let me, uh, because I wanted you to play a little bit with this mirror. Uh, well, so, so, the, the f so the idea between Jeffrey and my problems is that uh, well, yesterday you did exact diagonalization without using NCOM. Then the idea is to do my problem where you do some simple checks with NCOM, learn a little bit how to do simple tensor contractions. And then uh, probably the best idea is to do the, to construct with Jeffrey's problem, a tree tensor network. So you really start from scratch using NCON and compute this tree tensor network from the IC model or in any, any other model in fact and compute the energies. And then as a last problem, you, you can compute like this correlators in Mira where I'm giving you this package Mira and, um, uh, and, and also an icing model. So what, 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 what you do is you, you load this package by, it's in the same directory as the notebook directory, and then you just, in fact, this package can also create the mirror, but I think Jeffrey told, told you already that it's, it's a little bit complicated to actually 
find the, the, the optimal tensors of this mirror. You need to minimize all these tensors to, the, to, to get the, to the ground state energy. So, so that's complicated. That's already been done, and the package can also do it for you. So if you want to see how it's done, you can look into the package and see how it is done. But, but you get this. And then uh, you just do the load mirror, and I think it's also in the exercise sheet, of course, you, you load these Ising six pin dots, which is where the, the results are saved. And then you get uh, all these tensors, W, U, are all loaded. Uh, and I just want to show you to help you around a little bit. So this, this, this mirror has N layers. So N layers just have six of these layers. And for instance, so you see that, for instance, this W, if you look at the length, indeed it has these six layers. So W is all these isometries for all layers. So if you, if you look at W1, it's, all, it's the isometry of the first layer. And then there's a subtlety, uh, which is not completely obvious, that the length of this, uh, the, the, the W of the first layer is one. And this is because this package is made in such a way that it can do both translationally invariant mirrors and non-translationally invariant mirrors. So if it's not translationally invariant, you have a lot of these uh, different tensors. So then it has like L of these uh, isometries. But if it's translation invariant, of course, you have only one. Uh, and, and that's why you always have to take the first element, and there's only one element in this list. And then if we look at one, W1, comma 1, then this is, the, well, probably you can still output it. And then the useful thing is to look indeed at these dimensions and see that it is, 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 is properly a, a four tensor. And this is then the isometry. And I'll ask you a little bit about the questions, how to interpret these things. Uh, and this is how you then can so you get these tensors, and then the question is how to work with it, construct some n cons, and, and, and uh, compute, compute using, uh, using these tensors. And the same is for u. So u is uh, six of these layers, I think. And OK, the last thing, which is, is, is important, is that there's also the, 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 the density matrix. And, and this is the, the effective density matrix. So it actually has seven. This has one extra side. Uh, this is the one you, you would use, for instance, in this computation, so this is the green one, and uh, so that's not very obvious, but per, perhaps uh, this, this green one you, you can think of as, as, as representing the whole rest of the whole infinite uh, mirror. And of course, you already see a little bit that outside here, that nothing much happens. So it's just the identity, and, and uh, well, so so the, you, the out there is also just the identity, but you, you have to stop stop somewhere, uh, and this tensor represents stopping there, but. We constructed this reduced density matrix, or this effective reduced density matrix on every layer. So in every layer, you can use this tensor to stop here. So for instance, uh, you can, y there is a reduced density matrix on this layer, but there's also one on the, the bottom layer. So here, there's also a reduced density matrix, a 2, two tensor, which represents uh, basically going from this big reduced density matrix all the way down to this reduced density matrix, assuming there's nothing out there, right? Because then you can efficiently contract this, and you can actually compute what are all these reduced density matrix if nothing is there. And this, this is what you will use, because if you want to compute some operator, some uh, expectation value, you can try to contract the whole network, but it's, of course, complicated, and you would have to do all kinds of diagrams like this. And this is effectively what is done by taking this density matrix all the way at the top, and getting it down to every layer. So, so also there's a reduced density matrix at the second layer. So this is representing the state over here, this, this layer. And then you can put some operators over here or some operators over there. And then you get to contract this kind of. Yes. Well, so in this picture, so in, in, yeah, if you have an operator over here and an operator over there, yeah. then you cannot use the reduced density matrix over here because that assumes that out there, there's nothing, right? So if you, if, you, if you have an operator over here and an operator over there, then you take the reduced density matrix over here, because then, well, you draw this kind of what's called causal cones from here. You see that it can, it can compute all these things over here and all these things over there. But indeed, you, you have to go so high enough to not have influence over there. So this is also why longer distances get a little bit more complicated. But as Jeffrey showed, you can still efficiently compute it, but within a few steps. So this is also what, yeah. So, so, so the, the W actually contracts these to uh, three of these sides. So this, this, this uh, is a unitary transmission. And on the, the latter side, the dimension is, of course, the, the dimension of the spin chain itself. 
So there the dimension is just two. But up there, it can be anything. So this was a bond dimension six, and then it's six, but then, then it's arbitrary. You, the higher dimension you choose, the more accurate mirror you, you typically get. But in, at the lowest level, you have to use this dimension two. Yeah, it's a good question. I think uh, I'll uh, leave it at that for now.